Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And then turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. False prophets. False prophets that shall bring in damnable heresies. Do we not see that going on today, obviously? We have to remember something, dear brethren, that Roman Catholicism, Roman Catholicism is the one that is in control of all things through the Jesuit order, okay? And our Lord is allowing Satan through his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, to rule as he as they are right now. Not yet specifically openly, but they will be soon. They will be soon. Okay? The enemy of all mankind is the Roman Catholic Church. And the enemy of everything, of both man and beast, earth, whatever it is, is the Jesuit order. And who is the head of the Jesuit order? Well, that would be the Black Pope. The Black Pope, Arturo Sosa, the most powerful and the most dangerous man on earth. Hmm. You think um, Putin, Kamala Harris, that macaroni guy, Trudeau, you think these people have power? No. The Black Pope. The Black Pope Arturo Sosa is the most powerful and dangerous man on the earth. See, Pope Francis, dear friends, is a Jesuit. And according to the decrees of the Jesuit order, Pope Francis is subservient onto the head of the Jesuit order, Arturo Sosa. The superior, the superior general, he is called, Popularly called the Black Pope. Not because of his ethnicity, but because he's in the back, in the shadows. But, according to the Jesuits, the Jesuit need is under the authority of their provincial, and also the provincial is under the authority of the superior general of the order. Hence, Pope Francis is taking orders from Arturo Sosa. Okay? Roman Catholicism is the enemy of all mankind and her army, the Jesuits. Okay? And we have to remember something. You know, if you run into Catholics, you realize that Catholics are very loyal onto their popes, and onto their decrees and whatnot. How is why is that? Why is that? I'm going to be linking so, several videos in this um, uh, for you to watch. Okay, where we go into that. But I want to read you some quotes here uh, as we talk about the Jesuit order. We're going to start first, and there there is a video, uh, secret uh, secrets of the Jesuit order revealed. Okay, where they, uh, somebody reads these exactly, but I'm going to read it here for you. Okay, here's a quote about Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. Ignatius Loyola's, nor will it contribute a little to our advantage, advantage if, with caution and secrecy, we foment 
foment and heighten the animosities that arise among princes and great men, even to such a degree that they may weaken each other. The Hegelian principle. Control both sides of the argument to control the outcome. Okay? So they fight against each other, see. But if there appear any likelihood at reconciliation, then as soon as possible, let us endeavor to be mediators, lest others prevent us. This is, by the way, that is from the um, Secreta Monita. That's a quote from the Secre uh, Secreta Monita. The secret history of the Jesuit, or the secret instruction of the Jesuits. Beg your pardon. Finally, let, let all with such artfulness gain the assent over princes, noblemen, and the magistrates of every place, that they may be ready to at our beck, even to sacrifice their nearest relations and most intimate friends, when we say it is for our interest and advantage. Look at what's happening today. Okay? This is from the Secreta Monita, the secret instructions of the Jesuits. Okay? This is a direct quote from it. Okay? Okay? Let proper methods be used to get knowledge of the animosities that arise among great men, that we may have a finger in reconciling their differences. For by this means we shall gradually become acquainted with their friends and secret affairs. And of necessity engage one of the parties in our interests. Immediately upon the death of any person of post, let them take timely care to get some friend of our society preferred in his room, but this must be cloaked with such cunning and management as to avoid giving the least suspicion of our intended of our intending to usurp the prince's authority. Putting aside all private judgment, we should always be ready to accept this principle. I will believe that the white I see is black if the hierarchical church so defines it. Look at how words, euphemistic language, look at how words change their meaning. Okay? The Jesuits are masters of that. Taking a word that is simple in meaning and then twisting it to mean something else. Okay? Princes and persons. Princes and persons of distinction. Every, everywhere must by all means be so managed that we may have their ear and that we and that will easily secure their hearts by which way of proceeding all persons will become our creatures and no one will dare to give the society the least disquiet or opposition finally the society must endeavor to affect this at least and like i said this is from the secreta monita that having, that having gotten the favor and authority of princes, those who do not love them, at least fear them. At least fear them. Okay? Secret instructions of the Jesuit order. I have a link on this channel that will take you to a, a copy of the Secreta Monitra, Monita. It does work still. You, it'll redirect and you have to refresh but you can still download the PDF for the Secreta Monita, the one that's in the British Museum, okay? You can still download it off this channel, okay? But we also have to remember this about the Jesuit order, okay? We also have to remember this about the Jesuit order. This is a, a very good uh, quote from Napoleon Bonaparte, okay? The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious power. The chief is a general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power. Universal, Catholicos, power. Power to control the world by the volition of a single man. And right now they are doing that in the black pope, Arturo Sosa, the most powerful and dangerous man on this earth. But see, 
after the church of the living God is redeemed, resurrected, caught up, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he will be released by our Lord Jesus Christ on this earth for judgment. And to rule the world and to control the world by the volition of a single man, right now, that single man is Arturo Sosa, the black pope. After we, the church of the living God, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. After we are taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. That is the ultimate end that justifies the means unto the Jesuit to deliver all of this into the hands of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms. And this is from Napoleon Bonaparte, who was a Catholic, who the Jesuits killed. Okay, And at the same time, the greatest and most erroneous uh, er, 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 enormous of abuses, excuse me, and at the same time, the greatest and most enormous of abuses. The general of the Jesuits insists on being master, sovereign over the sovereign. Wherever the Jesuits are admitted, they will be masters, cost what it may. Their society is by nature dictatorial, and therefore it is the irreconcilable enemy of all constituted authority. That's why they hate America, Americans, and our Constitution. Every act, every crime, however atrocious, is a meritorious work if committed for the interest of the society of Jesus or by the order of the general. The black pope, the head of the Jesuit order, the head of Roman Catholicism, Okay? Francis is a Jesuit. Francis is subservient onto the black pope Arturo Sosa. And remember, the Catholics, the Jesuits, Jesuits Catholic, one and the same, the Jesuits want to bring everybody under the headship of Rome. It's called ecumen uh, ecumenism. Okay? Ecumenicalism. Excuse me. Okay? That's what uh, Vatican II is all about. Bringing everybody under the headship of Rome. It's a scam. Okay? But with that said, let's, let's take a look at the most powerful, most dangerous man on the face of the earth. This is from the YouTube channel Jesuit Global. Funny they don't have their comments open. Check this out. We're going to watch this. What part of the path to God is the COVID-19 epidemic showing us? The current experience of COVID-19 is showing us many things about ourselves and our world. Did you notice already uh, the lady with the feather bringing all religions together under the ecumenical umbrella? In particular, I want to focus on how it is lighting up various aspects of our path to God and how, even in difficult times, there is consolation to be found. Now, did you notice that? All the religions? Ultimately, once we are out of here, the Church of the Living God, it's going to be extreme Roman Catholicism, okay? It's going to be extreme Roman Catholicism. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you notice that? Bringing everybody together, all religions, because all paths lead to God, all paths lead to Rome. Excuse me. Right? And there it is, people. Right there. The Society of Jesus. The Jesuit Order. That is the enemy of all mankind. That is the greatest of monsters. That 
I don't care who you are. That is your enemy. First of all, it is showing us that we are one humanity. Every human being, every people, each culture that contributes to human diversity is part of this one varied, rich, and interdependent humanity. Now see, that's an open, uh, a true and false policy right there that he's speaking about. He's talking about we're all one, everybody has diversities that make we, us all one, blah, blah, blah. But what the Catholic Church teaches, the Catholic Church teaches that there is no salvation outside the church, okay? Okay? As we heard from Napoleon Bonaparte, their aim is power. They are dictatorial. And you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, okay? This whole bringing everybody together is a smokescreen. It's a scam, all right? He's talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's saying all this sweet stuff, you know, the facade of gentleness and uh, community and oneness with everybody. But no, no, no. Doesn't take much to get a Catholic to bear his fangs. Once the Church of the Living God is gone, people, you're going to see those fangs. Let's continue. It is showing us how overcoming a crisis is possible. It is possible when we become aware of the importance of looking after the common good. And common good. All for the common good, the community. You're not a Christian unless you bow to the steel of the Jesuit punyard. You're not a Christian unless you observe their dictates about what they created. These guys, the Jesuits, created all of this. Okay? They're the ones who brought this all to fruition. They're the ones that rule Catholicism. That man right there is the most powerful and dangerous man on earth. That man right there. Get a look at him. Get a look at him. Okay? And taking seriously our own individual responsibility. We can only live as one body, separately for each person or each person on their own. It is impossible. It is Yes, but they all have to come under the headship of Rome, remember. That's what he is talking about. That's his secret agenda, okay? To uh, control the world by the volition of a single man. Today, that single man is Arturo Sosa, the black pope. But again, once we're out of here, it's going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's the end that these guys are working for. You know the New World Order that you hear about so, so often hear about? It's not a New World Order. It's a return to the Old World Order, the Dark Ages, when Roman Catholicism ruled. You understand? Let's continue. Showing us that there is no difference in age, race, religion, or social status within one humanity. <laughs> this, this, oh, my. So there's no difference between age, race, uh, religion. But according to their own teaching in the catechism, uh, there is no salvation outside the church. Someone who is not of the Roman Catholic faith is a heretic. Okay? He's, he's lying. This is a show. Okay? This is a performance. People, that is not what the Catholics teach in their own documents, <coughs> in their own catechisms, okay? And you look in history, nothing has changed. There's nothing new under the sun. But it gets worse, actually. Let's continue. Each and every one of us is part of it. No one is left out. No one of us can do without the others. 
It is showing us that we want to walk together. We are all concerned. We help each other to overcome fears and anxieties. Each one of us is looking for a way to lend a hand, starting by putting what we, are, we ourselves want in second place and accepting the measures and sacrifices that allow us to contribute to the good of all. So, gouge out your right eye that it may be laid as a reproach upon Israel. Bow your knee to their dictates so we can all be one. Lift up that sleeve and essentially kill yourself so we can all be one. This is the enemy, people. This, the Jesuit order, this man, this position, that's the enemy. It is showing us the competence and generosity of those who are in the front line, caring for those affected, seeking solutions, or making difficult decisions for the good of all. It is showing us the sensitivity of so many people, organizations, and the enormous reserve of solidarity that exists in young people, in adults, and in elderly, in all corners of the human society. It is showing us the power of faith, the strong bones that unite believers, the love of Jesus Christ that impel us, reconciles us, and unites us. There are so many people praying together on social media. They the way he's talking so sweetly, it reminds me of the, just the way he is. He just reminds, you know, this facade that he's putting on. Uh, reminds me of my good friend from England. Yeah, it really does. Reminds me quite a bit of him, actually. Hi. They want to profess their faith, that faith which they feel in the depth of their hearts and which they cannot keep to themselves. And see, there's, see, now there's Francis. Francis is subservient on to Sosa. Okay? He's a Jesuit. The Jesuit is to be in subservient um, service to their provincial ultimately to the head of the Jesuit order. He's a puppet for Sosa. Do you get it? Okay. Francis, I believe personally, is playing the role of a fool. F-O-O-L-E. Okay. To make the pre-Vatican II Catholics angry. To overthrow what Francis is doing after we are taken out. Okay. Might happen before. I don't know, but he's an actor. He is not. You gotta remember, people. Francis is not an idiot. He's not stupid. Okay, Jesuits are brilliant men. Yes, they are. Okay, yes, they are. But he's acting this way purposely to bring uh, to make Catholicism of today look odious unto those who desire the glory days. The Dark Ages. Okay? He's fulfilling a role, being played as a puppet by his master, Arturo Sosa. I have been receiving information about the many creative initiatives that have been taken both in the provinces, regions, communities, and apostolic works of the Society of Jesus, as well as in collaboration with others. I thank the Lord for all of this. I encourage you to continue looking for the best way to be close to those in need in order to continue to walk the common path together. I join in the prayer of the whole body of the Society of Jesus, of the Catholic Church, of all Christian churches, of other... The Society of Jesus, the Catholic Church, and all Christian churches. Society of Jesus... Catholic Church and all Christian churches. So this, this man, the most powerful and dangerous man on earth, is attributing unto himself and to his order, Christian. Look at me. Do you, do you have any, do you get why now I personally am very adamant about calling the Church of the Living God 
Christian. When Peter mentions it, it's better to be called a Christian than a murderer. Okay? In that context, being labeled Christian with murderer, eh, that's what they called us. That's not what, according to scripture, we called ourselves. Are you a Christian? Huh? You a Christian, huh? Then guess what, buddy? You're in league with that. No, I'm not. Then why are you calling yourself a Christian? You just heard from the most deadliest, dangerous, most powerful man on earth. Say, all Christian churches. Which, by 1984, I think it was, with Reagan, when he was sworn in in front of an obelisk, that was a sign on to all Jesuits across the world that all churches were overtaken and overrun with the Jesuit order. You're Christian. Hmm? You're Christian. So are they. Let's continue. Other religions or belief, and of all those who their attitude of solidarity are looking for are finding appropriate ways to continue to lend a hand. We don't know how long this stretch of the road is or what will follow after. So let us ask for light to see the way forward. The <laughs> right. grace yeah. that we, yeah. Yeah. we need to walk. Because uh, even Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light? Yeah. As a brothers and sisters, in solidarity with the whole of humanity and with the planet on which we live. May the Lord bless us and keep us, we walk this journey together. Amen. Enough of that. Enough of that. Enough of that. Oh, look at that. Noam Komsky in there. What a shot. What a shot. So. So, okay. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me uh, let me uh, get rid of this. We don't need to see this anymore. Yes. Yes. Beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon. Here we go. Let me try to... Uh, Oops, oops. <laughs> oh. oh, well, anyway, <laughs> sorry, brethren. I'm trying to, uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Let me get this up here. There we go. Bear with me, brethren. This is not, uh, this is not what I'm the best at. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So, you saw that. That was Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. Now, let's remember some things about the Jesuits, okay? I'm going to be reading something to you from this book, The Black Pope. This is called The Making of, the, of a Jesuit. The Making of the Jesuit. This is on page 60. On the verse six, uh, page 61, I'm going to be reading from where my finger is and the entirety of this page. Okay. Let's keep this in mind. Okay. Obedience is the one end of all this training. Unasking, unthinking, unreasoning obedience yes that's how that's why jesuits can go down on a sinking ship like the titanic okay that edward smith guy who was a coadjutor for the jesuit order how could these men go on uh death traps like that give their lives like that why because of their training the spiritual exercises okay obedience is the one end of all this training unasking unthinking unreasoning obedience it is more than unwise to underestimate the strength of an, attack, of an attacking army. 
or to express contempt for the ability or plans of the leader of an opposing force. What may seem to us the most the merest folly is to others heavenly wisdom. We cannot expect to convince if we do not understand the point of view of the individual whom we desire to convert. We cannot expect the hearty cooperation of those who dislike, even if they do not fear the Jesuit system. If we either mis misstate its working or understate the motive power by which it is governed, and that's the power of Satan himself, okay? It is true that the Jesuit, like all Catholics, has his pantheon of divinities, but he believes in them as firmly as the Christian believes in God. And he also believes in God. He does. The Jesuit believes in God. Yes, they do. It is true that the Jesuit has his general to whom he gives the obedience of a slave. Now keep that in mind. Remember that with Sosa, uh, with uh, Francis. Francis is a Jesuit. Sosa is the head of the Jesuit order. Sosa is the one who is controlling everything. Okay? He is the one, not Francis. Francis is the puppet. Okay? Francis is subservient onto Sosa. Okay? But the Jesuit believes his general to be a God. Let me read that again. But the Jesuit believes his general to be a God. So that if the dead voice of God, because to these people, to these coadjutors here on YouTube as well, who attack uh, the church of the living God, and the ones you meet out there in the church buildings, okay? So that the dead voice of God, the living God unto these people is a dead voice because they're dead in their trespasses and sins. So to say in scripture seems to conflict with the living voice of God, which comes through the general. The authority of the living voice must prevail. So, the voice of the general is to prevail over the voice of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. See, this is what makes these people so dangerous, okay? They have no will of their own. They follow orders, okay? That's what makes these people so dangerous. That's what makes them attack in such a feverish pace, okay? Their lives are not their own. As our lives are not our own, we've been bought by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, but unto the Jesuit, Sosa owns them. Okay? It cannot be too clearly understood that religion, or we may say a certain view of religion, lies at the root of the whole matter. It cannot be too clearly understood that the whole system would fall to the ground at once, if the obedience of the Jesuit was claimed on merely human grounds. Yeah, yeah. See, that's another spirit. Like, go through the spiritual exercises. Uh, they are having devils imparted onto them. Okay? You go through that spiritual exercises of, of Ignatius of Loyola, you're going to be devil-possessed. You're going to be filled with devils. Okay? A number of men may agree to obey a fellow man for a limited time, as soldiers obey their general in war. But through attempts have, but though attempts have been made by Roman Catholic theologians to compare the two kinds of obedience, there is actually the greatest possible difference. We have alluded to this matter before, but its importance may justify us in returning to the subject. And that's the disloyalty uh, teaching. The Jes on to the Jesuit, to the Catholic, to the nominal Catholic, uh, uh, Francis is their God. To the Jesuit, Sosa is God. Okay? And overall, 
It's that guy we saw, Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order. Okay? The obedience of the soldier is an obedience of convenience. The obedience of the Jesuit is claimed to be an evidence of the highest religious virtue. And think, think about the precepts and mandates that they, they, the Jesuit order, has put upon the earth right now. And, and look at that statement. Let me read that statement again. The obedience of the soldier is an obedience of convenience. The obedience of the Jesuit is claimed to be an obedience of the highest religious virtue. Again, what do these Christians from the church buildings, what do they tell you? Huh? You're not a good Christian unless you get the steel of the Jesuit poniard. You're not a good Christian unless you... <laughs> You're not a good Christian unless you bow to the Catholic disease creators. And you know, you look at the the high ups in these corporations, you know, the high ups there are even in like the front offices or whatever, you'll find a Jesuit tie somewhere. The Jesuits have their hands and everything. Like uh, Eric John Phelps once said to the Jesuit, the world is their uh, candy shop and they have their hand in the cookie jar touching all that's in there. The soldier is not obliged to internal obedience. He may criticize the actions and motives of his general within certain common sense limits. The Jesuit is taught that an internal criticism is quite as much an act of deadly sin as an openly expressed murmur. Now get a load of that. Onto the Jesuit it says, if you doubt, that's a sin. If you don't go blindly along with what they say, that's a sin. Look at what they're doing out there. Look at it, people. Look at what's being implemented. It's from the Jesuit order. Okay? And who runs the Jesuit order? Satan. People need to open your eyes. You need to wake up. Okay? This is being implemented right now. The soldier can appeal to higher authority and to public opinion if he considers himself wrong. But the hapless Jesuit is allowed no appeal. Even to the Pope. <laughs> because especially today with Francis, uh, who is a Jesuit, he's subservient on the Sosa, okay? To appeal is to suppose it possible that the superior may have erred. Oh, boy. Or erred, excuse me, erred. And to admit such a, and to admit such a su supposition would be to open the door to a freedom, however limited, which the Jesuit cannot allow to his subjects. You got no mind of your own. You can't think for your own. Oh, you'll think uh, in terms for the greater glory of God, the end justifies the mean when they let you loose as a rabbit dog. But you don't got your own brain. You ain't got your own mind. You can't think for yourself. You're told you're a robot. You're a machine. You're nothing. You're, you're, you're a mindless sword in the hand of your general. How does that make you feel? Hmm? Well, that's right. Because everything that may have been of you has been driven out by these spiritual exercises. These are the types of people that are going to be ruling this world, uh, especially after we, the Church of the Living God, are gone. Okay? These are the type of people who are in charge right now, too, by the way. Although the general of the Jesuits is the head of the order, 
religiously as well as in all matters of discipline. It will be observed how powerfully his authority is strengthened by the vow required from every Jesuit, uh, by the vow required from every Jesuit. It's misspelled. It says form here. There's a misprint in this. Of personal service to the Pope. If a Jesuit perchance rebelled or doubted, he can at once be told that it is quite as much against the individual Pope he rebels as against the, indiv against the individual superior. And what Catholic, while he retains even a spark of faith, would try to rebel against his God on earth? That these men should be should have succeeded as they have succeeded is matter of little wonder. Yeah, yeah. They the Jesuits have done, especially in America, the Jesuits have done exactly what they said they were going to do. That these men should have succeeded as they have succeeded is matter of little wonder. When they have been governed by such a code of laws that they should have failed and have been driven forth with continually with continually from Catholic countries proves that after all the skill which organized which organized was but human, and that the ends which it strove to attend were not for the benefit of humanity, but for the greater glory of God, their God. Satan, the little G God of this world. Okay? And here's another quote. Here's another quote from, uh, about the Jesuits. Um, I don't know from who this is, this quote is directly, but here I'm going to read this to you. Then we're going to look at some scripture. Okay? I'm going to be reading to where my fingers are on this page right here. Okay? Oh, 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 if you can read that, go ahead, pause it and read it. The sad facts of the matter are that the Vatican has been the major player in the geopolitical arena for many centuries. And for the past four century, centuries, the Jesuit order operating from within the Vatican, they're in control, has been the major player in both the geopolitical arena and the theological arena, spiritual and temporal, the spiritual sword and the temporal sword, worldly sword. You see uh, uh, Catholic pic pictures of their Jesus doing this, okay, spiritual and temporal. When you see this in Catholics, that's what that's signifying, the two swords, okay. And a very big player through its Knights of Malta in the financial arena and in the international intelligence community. The more I study history and the more I turn over stones, the more I find the footsteps and fingerprints of the Vatican. And again, more specifically, its Jesuit order involved in the most sinister and evil activities. Indeed, the Jesuit order, i.e. the Society of Jesus, the company, the CIA, Catholics in Action, are also known as the company. Hmm. Interesting. Headed by the Jesuit Superior General, i.e. Oh, so we looked at him is the most formidable enemy to religious and civil liberty that the world has probably ever seen. Yes. 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 The general of the Jesuits, Arturo Sosa, is exactly that. The most formidable enemy to religious and civil liberty that the world has probably ever seen. The Jesuits became so infamous in Europe for vomiting wars and revolutions and for assassinating heads of state 
that they were expelled from 83 countries, city-states, and cities by 1931, quite often by Roman Catholic monarchs. Get a load of that. The Jesuit Superior General, the Black Pope, not only controls his powerful Jesuit order, but also controls the powerful Knights of Malta, top-level Knights of Columbus, and the top levels of Freemasonry. Through his control of the top levels of secret societies, especially Knights of Malta and high-level Freemasons. Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuits, people. Get over it. He controls the top intelligence agencies of the world. Exactly. Sosa controls the CIA, CIA, the FBI, Spesnats, um, probably even Hassan. Okay? Probably. You need to understand just how dangerous the Jesuit order is. And you're a fool. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, if you believe that they have nothing to do with it, that they're just a religious order. You're a fool. You are an absolute fool. Okay? Let's continue this. A good example of this occurred in World War II. The top intelligence man, intelligence man in the OSS, later the CIA, was Knight of Malta William Wild Bill Donovan. William Donovan. The top intelligent man, intelligence man in Nazi Germany on the Eastern Front was German Knight of Malta, General Reinhard Gielen. And the top intelligence man in the Soviet Union was Knight of Malta, Prince Anton Turkle, who used Jesuit priests for his couriers. Thus, the Jesuit order was in control of the major combatants and able to steer the war in the directions they wanted and in the process to slaughter millions of their favorite targets. Jews, Protestants, and Orthodox Christians. Additionally, because of his control of the Vatican hierarchy through his Jesuit order and Part Two and P2 Masonry, the Jesuit Superior General also has control and use of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. What is that? The Office of the Inquisition. Yes! The Office of the Inquisition has not been absolved. What is it? Uh, what was it? I just read this. Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. I.e., the Office of Inquisition. The Roman Cura, the Vatican Finances, which are substantial. If all this does not make the Black Pope the most powerful man on the face of the earth, I do not know what would. And that is true. That is true. Now, get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn to your authorized, in your authorized version of the scriptures to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 1 unto 11. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, Think about verse 3. Before all this happened, we were, there was questions like, we have peace or safety, or do we need peace and safety? Look what's going on. 
For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Peace and safety seems to be returning right now, right? In some semblance, because a lot of people are getting the steel of the Jesuit poniard, right? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. <laughs> you know, when they turn up the 5G, and uh, these people who uh, have received the steel of the Jesuit poniard, they start dying. And from graphene oxide poisoning, which is, <laughs> by the way, you know the swabs with the little squ uh, squiggly things. Okay. When people start dying. Oh, we need peace and safety. We need lockdowns again. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 3, with, in light of what's happening today, is kind of taken on a whole different perspective, hasn't it? Verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. We knew this was coming. But to see it actually happening, yeah. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness like the Jesuit order. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're not going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. That's the time of Jacob's trouble, when God pours out his wrath upon the earth for seven years. Okay, And during that time uh, period, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be released by our Lord Jesus Christ to uh, rule for judgment upon this earth. Okay, And Satan is going to be indwelling that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Okay? And it's going to be radical, extreme Roman Catholicism during that time. Absolutely it is. Because, look, they're trying to bring everybody together. You believe that, don't you? Well, then I guess you're saved, right? Because you just believe. Yeah. Verse 10, who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with them. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Look at verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. That covers your heart. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Then, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity, in patience. Oh, yeah, patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, separate, not false accusers, nor given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to, do, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. True woman of God is obedient unto her husband as unto the Lord. Okay? And a woman who's calling themselves a Christian and is in total opposition with her husband? Yeah, there's some big problems with that. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded, to grow up, not to be taken with the things of this world. 
okay, to be renewed in your mind, okay, to put away childish things like video games, like wicked devil music, okay, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God and Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world. The easy believism, Jesuit coadjutor devil will say, it says should. It's talking about the changed life. God doesn't save you so you can remain unchanged. He will change your life when you obey him and what he says for you to do. Not to say, not to stay saved or to be saved, no. But once you are saved, your life is going to change. He's going to lead you and guide you and direct you on how to change. Okay? Meaning he's going to change you. And again, and I've talked about this at length. Unto the easy believism, Jesuit, Catholic, coadjutor, devil. They hate to change life because they themselves are not saved. I am convinced wholeheartedly that every single one of these easy believism, devil, Jesuit, coadjutor, heretics that are here on YouTube, I am convinced, kind of already spilled the beans, I think they're all Jesuits, coadjutors at the least. Big smile, buddy. Can I prove that to you? No. But ye shall know them by their fruits. Uh, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Against brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord, and against the changed life. Mm. Yeah, but remember, those guys are Christians. Do you really want to be a Christian? Or do you want to be of the church of the living God? It's, it's either or. There's no gray area, people. Looking for that blessed hope. What is that blessed hope? The redemption of the purchased possession. Being caught up. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise them. See, we are called unto good works. We are called to be a peculiar people. Peculiar people. My wife says unto me, we're peculiar people. It's like, amen, baby. We sure are. We sure are. Because see, the Jesuit, they're a peculiar people too. But see, they're working for their father, the devil, who is Satan. Okay? And, and, and go to Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. Satan runs Catholicism in the Jesuit order. Satan runs Catholicism. Satan runs the Jesuit order. Okay? But in Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. See, Sosadar was preaching about being, you know, getting, it, getting everyone together, uh, giving on to others, blah, 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 blah. It's a facade. It's fake. He's speaking one thing for the initiated, or for, or for the uninitiated, excuse me, one doctrine for the uninitiated, but for the initiated, there's a totally different doctrine. Global control. Death 
by any means. The ends justify the means. Zechariah 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that are that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Foolish, a foolish shepherd. Now this is referring to, obviously, the devil, Satan. But sure is a good description of Arturo Sosa, the black pope. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. Like all these hireling church building people. Okay. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And you've seen in Hollywood the pictures where they're covering their right eye. Even there was a video about a uh, Jesuit trained Donald Trump where he was wearing one of his stupid Make America Great Again hats where his right eye was darkened. Yeah. Yeah, people. People. Roman Catholicism is your enemy. The Jesuit order is your enemy. The Jesuit order runs Catholicism. You need to wake up to that and realize who your true enemy is and that they control all things. Is everybody a Jesuit? No, no. But those who are lost, they have that spirit of Antichrist. So it's it's not a wonder that you can see someone. A perfect example, that video, The Wrath of Jody, that Jody Arias. You watch that video of her, a brother sent that on to me. And um, you would think by the way her, her, the way she talked and the way she manipulated and stuff, you would think she was a Jesuit. But see, it's that same spirit, that spirit of Antichrist. See, and when you and I, the Church of the Living God, we have fellowship one with another. It's that same spirit, the spirit of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. They do their uh, the deeds of their father, the devil. We are to do the deeds of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, according to the scriptures. I hope you uh, who watch this. Take heed to these things. And be aware. Okay? Be aware. Time is short. And by the time some of you figure this out, it may be too late. Take heed, brethren. Take heed, people. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Did I stop recording? Nope, no I did not.